My name is Mike Dietz, and our presentation is on model data fusion approaches to estimating terrestrial carbon budgets across the contiguous US. I want to draw your attention in particular to, to two key parts of this title. First, the idea of a carbon budget. There are a lot of different data products that tell us about parts of the carbon cycle, uh, but don't give us a complete understanding of the carbon budget like we would get uh, from detailed uh, field studies at a site scale. How do we scale that kind of understanding of carbon budgets, the pools, the fluxes, how they interact, uh, and how we can kind of close th those mass balances up? Um, second, I want to emphasize how we're doing this, which is through model data fusion. Um, the key part here is that we are using uh, a primarily data-driven approach where we use models as scaffolds to allow us to reconcile uh, different data sources uh, together. So essentially using models as giant covariance matrices to allow different parts of uh, observations to communicate with each other and to share information. Uh, next, how do we do this? Um, so we do this uh, through um, the forecast analysis cycle to kind of generate the carbon cycle and the equivalent of a reanalysis product where we are fusing observations together over a historical time period uh, to come up with our best estimate of what happened in the past. So in this case, we're relying on ensemble-based methods to make these forecasts probabilistically and then combine them with data. So we start with uh, probability distributions for our understanding of the initial state of the system. When we start, we're driving the models with ensemble uh, reanalysis product, the ERA-5 product. So we have uncertainty in the drivers and conditions. And then we have uncertainty in the model parameters uh, that were, um, is generated from a hierarchical parameter data simulation uh, over 22 Ameriflux sites where we calibrated the model using uh, net ecosystem exchange, you know, carbon flux data, and latent energy exchange water flux data uh, from these 22 sites. So we feed uh, these samples of initial conditions, drivers, and parameters into a model. So we're making now uh, an ensemble, and then we make a forecast that gives us a, a now a probabilistic ensemble uh, forecast. So once we've made that forecast for any particular year, we're going to confront that forecast with new observations from that year. And this at this stage, those observations are coming from two sources: uh, the land render above ground biomass product, which is ultimately uh, derived from Landsat, and the uh, uh, Modus LEI data. Uh, we then combine uh, the forecasts and observations. Uh, in what's called the analysis step, which is essentially just an application of Bayes' theorem, uh, where the forecast is treated as our prior estimate of the state of the system, and the observations enter through a likelihood, and we combine that prior and likelihood to get a posterior, which gives us an updated estimate of the state of the system. And uh, I want to point out uh, that all of this code and techniques are, are embedded in the PCAMP project, which is a larger system for model data informatics. So, how does this look in practice? So here's uh, an example of what's occurring at, at the site scale. So here we see uh, in each year a forecast is made that predicts, in this case, above ground biomass one year into the future. We then see what the above ground biomass for that year actually was, and then we combine the forecast and analysis. Uh, the forecast and the data get an updated estimate of the system the analysis. The other thing you'll note is that when we do this, that not only are we updating the thing we observe above ground biomass, but we're also updating the things we don't observe, in this case, LAI and soil carbon, that are being updated based on the covariance with the things we observe. The other thing we notice is that around 2001, the appearance of the MODIS LAI data set, uh, which caused a, a, a noticeable uh, reduction in the uncertainty about the LAI. Previously, we had a good bit of uncertainty uh, because we could only constrain the LAI based on the model dynamics and the above ground biomass. But once we observe the modus LAI, we see a, a pretty rapid shrinkage in the uncertainty in that pool. We we're also able to, to constrain uh, the fluxes, the, the GPP, NPP, uh, NEP. We're, we're using the posterior analysis that occurs at that angle time step to weight the forecast over that preceding year. Uh, and then we uh, perform the analysis, again, is not based on a uh, constraint of the flux data. It's a constraint of uh, above ground biomass and LAI. We get a reduction uh, in the uncertainty in the carbon fluxes. And, and we're seeing that we're learning about 
these pools and fluxes indirectly as well, learning about them directly through observations. So the next step was to move this up from uh, the scale of individual sites up to a larger continental scale. And so we're now operating this uh, currently at a 500 point uh, assimilation across the contiguous US uh, for four PFTs, deciduous conifer, arid grassland, and mesic grassland. So once we've done that, uh, that 500 point uh, data assimilation, we're able to then upscale this uh, to CONUS uh, scale estimates of carbon pools and fluxes. So here is our estimated uh, carbon budget for the US from 1987 to present in terms of uh, gross primary productivity, net primary productivity, and, and NEP, net ecosystem productivity. There are actually are uh, some patterns here that are not uh, likely to be signaled, uh, but are actually like to be transients of the data simulation system itself. So one thing we notice is that from the start of the system, there are a few initial transients. Uh, the other thing we're seeing is once we assimilate the LAI data, we see kind of a, another transient as our uh, data simulation system has to come into adjustment with information that's getting from the MODIS LAIs. We also want to point out this that under the hood, the same system that we're using to do this retrospective historical reanalysis at an annual time scale, we're also using the same exact system uh, to run real-time carbon forecasts over the weather time scales. Some future directions. Uh, we definitely are continuing looking at trying to increase the spatial resolution. And we're also interested in understanding uh, the spatial covariance uh, in, the, in these data products. So here, uh, we also obviously want to keep increasing uh, the data constraints. You know, some things very high on our list are getting a still carbon constraint in because right now that's completely latent. Uh, the posteriors coming out of this data simulation product are also being fed into an atmospheric inversion as a prior. And finally, you know, we want to expand this out to more models since this is done in the PCAN framework, which is already a system that supports uh, 20 different models. Uh, thank you all for uh, taking time to listen to this talk.